the same speeds as what the i7 on the left can handle at max speed. All right, today we're gonna to be seeing how this new 2019 MacBook Pro 8 cores stacks up against last year's edition in creative professional applications. We're gonna be testing out Audio Logic Pro X. We're gonna be doing some photo in Photoshop and we're gonna be doing some serious heavy lifting 8K raw, red, red raw, 8K in Final Cut Pro. And we're gonna show you exactly how they perform. We're gonna be tackling fan noise, how to reduce the fan noise, how it handles with an eGPU, all this kind of goodness that you won't get on other channels. So make sure you hit that like and sub up. All right, let's get to it. We're gonna start off in audio production, Logic Pro X. And I've borrowed this sample file from the Music Pro channel, so make sure you check them out. All right, so on the left, the i7 with 32 gigabytes RAM, launched it a nanosecond faster than the i9 eight core with 16 gigabytes RAM. Now this test is awesome because it has 128 tracks. So this, we're gonna be showing you how it performs on, on first, the 2018 MacBook Pro. Boom shakalaka, 128 is too much. Let's see if the 2019 eight core is any better. Three, two, one. Okay, it lasted one second longer. So I'm gonna reduce the tracks all the way down to 100. Three, two, one. All right, they both couldn't handle 100 tracks. Let's reduce it down all the way to 80. Three, two, one. Check it out right there. The eight core machine can handle 80 tracks playing at one time. All right, in case you can't see, on the left, it can handle. Best I can get with the i7 is 60. On the right, the 2019 edition, the 8-core beast can handle 80 tracks going at one time. However, this is very, very bad. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the fans have ramped up on both machines. On the left, it's going 4,700, and on the right, it's going 4,500. Now this, in my opinion, is not good enough for audio files. If you're trying to do some audio editing, hearing all these fans is a bit bad. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna disable turbo boost. I'm gonna limit the CPUs to their base clock speeds. This will ramp the fans right down. I'm gonna show you the limits of the CPUs with usable audio levels from the fans. So I've got the app Turbo Boost Switcher. I'm gonna click Disable Turbo Boost. So the i9 on the right has dropped from over three gigahertz all the way down to 2.3, and the i7's dropped from, again, over three gigahertz to 2.2. Let's see how many tracks they can play. So first, let's see if the i9 can still handle 80. Unfortunately, it can't. 60, nope. 50. So there we have it, the i9 on the right is handling 50 tracks going at a time at its base clock speed of 2.3. That means the fans are gonna be silent. Let's see how low we need to make the i7 on the left. 40, it can't handle. So with Turbo Boost disabled, we can go from 35 from 2018's i7 model to 50 on i9 2019 model. That's with Turbo Boost disabled, so the fans are silent. So 50 tracks, the fans are now silent. You can actually use this for audio production. This is a good improvement. Of course, 30 and 50 is more than enough for audio production. However, you guys are crazy and you wanna know the limits. So if you're into audio and you wanna have quiet fans, disable Turbo Boost and get the i9 from 2019. Now, let's see how Photoshop is handled for you photo editors out there. What I'm loading here is an 8K photo file. Three, two, one, go. Loading speeds, the i9 was ever so slightly faster. However, not that much of a noticeable difference. Let's try doing some effects like blurring. So with these render tasks, they both seem about the same. Let's get a bump map in 3D. Three, two, one. All right, so I've been testing Photoshop out and they both pretty much run exactly the same. Interestingly, when you look at the stats, the graphs, it looks like the i7 on the left used up to 75% of the CPU. However, the i9 on the right only used at most 45%. So it seems like maybe Adobe need to optimize their software for eight cores because right now I can't discern a single difference. 75% up there, 45% up there. Now, Let's go crazy. Let's do some Final Cut Pro with 8K red, red cinema camera footage. Now I'm gonna launch A7 III and red footage at the same time. Two projects, three, two, one, let's go. 
they pretty much loaded at the same time. Now let's start off with some A7 III. I've got better quality. Interestingly enough, the i9 struggled more than the i7. The i7 got further into the footage than the i9. This part is a bit tricky, so I'm gonna drop this down now to better performance. So I haven't even got to the red cinema camera footage yet, and it looks like even in better performance, if you have any title screens or overlays on the 2018 or the 2019, you're gonna get frames dropped. Now you can fix this by rendering out the title scenes, and that's what I'm gonna do. However, just know, that vanilla A7 III works well. However, when you start using titles, not effects, just titles, that's where it struggles. I'm gonna skip past this part now and show you how A7 III footage is ran with no titles on top, better quality on both. So you can see running behind me, both computers handling 4K A7 III footage completely fine. But now, let's completely destroy these machines. We're gonna go into red cinema camera footage right now. We're gonna start off with the Red Dragon. This fella, he's 6K. Do you think, do you think they can handle 6K? Let's find out. So these are both 4K 60P projects and I'm gonna turn on better quality for both. And let's see how they handle, jumping around. Jumps around fine. Let's play back this part. Straight away, both computers can't handle better quality. So I'm gonna switch over to better performance, which will display this footage at quarter res. And let's see if you can handle it now. 6K. All right, that worked out well. Let's jump into the Helium Sensor S35 footage. 4K 60 project. Gonna go into this beautiful shark. Jump around. You can jump around. Scrubbing. Scrubbing seems to work. It's a bit slower, but it's completely fine. Let's play back this part. All right, pretty much very close in performance. Problem with this, however, is if you can hear it on the i9, the fans have ramped up to over 4,000 and they were skyrocketing as it was playing back. Let's have a listen. They've pretty much ramped up to 5,500 with this red, not even the most, the best sensor out there, not the full frame one. Cores are going three and a half gigahertz. CPUs being completely destroyed, 100%. Once again, this shoots up to 75% power draw, 3.8 gigahertz using 100% of the CPU. Now, let's go crazy. This is the red Monstro 8K sensor. This guy, full frame, beautiful footage. Prepare yourself for amazingness and prepare your computer to die. So let's see, 4K 60p. Let's see how far the i7 gets and let's see how far the i9 gets. Three, two, one, go. Again, the i9 can only handle a couple of more seconds over the i7. So it looks like frames will be dropped, especially when going to the best red camera you can have. And this is rendering at quarter res. It's not even full res. Full res, it can't handle that. So what? I recommend you do is always transcode your footage. So I'm gonna transcode both these clips to optimized media and let's see how they run. Three, two, one, go. So the i9 just finished when the i7 was around 75%. That's a 30% improvement in transcode speeds. And let's see if they can handle playing back the footage now. So right behind me here, we have 8K Monstro footage, full frame, beautiful gorgeousness, running completely fine on both of them. All you have to do is encode them into optimized media and it runs fast on these MacBook Pros. The fans, they're going 2000 on both. So you can do 8K as long as you transcode the footage. Of course, this is with no effects applied or anything like that. Let's see if we can do it better quality. And no, it's just straight up, I said no from the beginning. Nah, bro, nah, bro, not gonna happen. So, hope you found this video useful. I'd say, yeah, the i9 is a nice big jump, especially for audio guys, you can get an extra 20 tracks. Photoshop, not that much, didn't see any difference. Final Cut Pro, you're still gonna have to transcode your footage. But of course, transcoding speed, that was a lot faster. Hope you found this video useful. Audio, video, photo, we got you covered on this channel.
the same speeds as what the i7 on the left can handle at max speed. And if you're wondering how it performs with a Vega 64 EGP plugged in, this is better performance. Let's see how it plays. No, it still isn't able to do red footage. It looks like with this kind of footage, it doesn't use the GPU. Just FYI, I'm using this microphone and it is so unreliable. Like it keeps on flipping, it keeps on flipping like here. It keeps on flipping and flopping. Like you, you start off like this and then it flip like this and then it flip like that. It's uh, it keeps flipping. So I wish they made the clip longer to stop that. However, you can always plug in uh, a mic in here and still use it. But so far I'm liking it. I'll have a full review of this unit very soon.